so dear students today we are going to discuss about the uh, this topic that is the internal check uh, we know that in accounting we have so many process starting from the generalized generalization to uh, to preparation of the final accounts in between this process we know that we have generalizing posting to the concerned books of account and the handling of cash the recording of payments and the receipts in the cash book and the remittance to the cash to the bank and issue of receipt and uh, like we have so many or number of process or number of transactions in an accounting so if any person is allowed to perform a particular or single work from the beginning to end there are uh, chances for errors and frauds in the books of account because only that person is uh, dealing with this process okay so in order to avoid this problem the what we are doing is then the various process of accounting are to be entrusted to different staff in accordance with their distinctive qualifications okay so the one uh, the recording is assigned to one person and the recording of, and the recording of the receipts is according to uh, is assigned to one person and the remittance of cash to bank is assigned to one person so like this each and every single process is assigned to each and every person so what the benefit is that the benefit is that the, the the activity of the one person will be audited by the activity by the second person and the activity of the second person is audited by the uh, next person like this uh, if it continues we can uh, reduce the chances of errors okay so the term internal check means a system under which the work the work uh, connected with carrying out and recording of transactions is allocated among the various members of the staff and as i already told we uh, due to this arrangement or due to this work arrangement we can reduce the errors and frauds on we can prevent the errors and frauds okay and uh, <clears throat> moving on the meaning of internal check it means that it is the arrangement of duties among the employees in such a way that the work done by one employee is automatically checked by the another employee okay so due to this that employee or the uh, the employee which doing a single thing will attain the specialization in that process okay so it facilitate the assignment of tasks according to the skill and capabilities of the employees and thereby that employees acquiring the specializations or specialization of that work and uh, the major advantage is that there will be no chance of errors and fraud according to the frm d pola internal check means it is a practically a continuous internal audit carried out by the staff itself by means of which the work of each individual is independently checked by the others of the staff okay so the the work done by the one person is audited by the next person so we can say that it is practically a continuous internal audit carried out by the staff itself the work done by one staff is audited by the next person okay like this we can say that it is a continuous internal audit carried on by the staff and <clears throat> regarding the objectives uh, there are so many objectives with regard to the internal check the first one is that to exercise moral check over the staff but uh, as i already told it is all it is the the work the work done by the one staff is audited by the or the inspected by the next staff so uh, this arrangements act as a moral check over the staff they cannot come in fraud and uh, uh, due to the specialization due to this work arrangement the employees attain the specialization and due to that specializ specialization in the work we can ensure that the accounting system produces the reliable and adequate accounting informations we can uh, rely on that accounting information because at every stage the one the one's activity is supervised by the other activity 
so we can ensure the uh, adequacy of that accounting information and third one is that due to this arrangement we uh, will provide a protection to the resources of the business against the fraud carelessness and uh, inefficiency we in this arrangement we can prevent the fraud because as i as we already taught because the one work is supervised by the other person and the carelessness is also less because we the system produces the reliable and adequate accounting information okay so due to the specialization in work we can reduce the inefficiency so the third objective is that this system provide the protection to the resources of the business against the fraud carelessness and inefficiency and the fourth point is that uh, due to the, uh, this arrangement uh, we can ensure that the no business transaction is left unrecorded because if we left one transaction that will be identified by the next person so to distribute the work in such a manner that no business transaction is left unrecorded okay and the fifth one is that we can ensure the responsibility of a particular error because each and every stage we are auditing or we are supervising this or we are inspecting in the transactions so due to this arrangement we can uh, uh, we can ensure the responsibility or we can uh, we can say who is responsible for that error or fraud okay so to allocate the duties and responsibilities of each clerk in such a way that he may be held responsible for the particular fraud or error okay and the next one is that this system helps to reduce the errors frauds and irregularities in the business that we already discussed and it will increase the efficiency of the clerk because of they will uh, they have to do only a single task and thereby they are attaining the specialization so due to the division of work the efficiency of the clerk will increase and uh, next one is we can uh, we can detect the errors on frauds in the early stage itself and the we can prepare the final accounts with easy and efficiency because this transaction the all these transactions are free from the errors and free from the fraud and free from the irregularities so we can prepare the final accounts with easy and efficiency and also we can reliable on that final account and only the single task is allotted to the um, that uh, to a particular person from the beginning to end and this will helps to attain the specialization and he will be a specialized in that skill or he will be specialized in that work okay so these are the objectives of the internal check and next one th there are certain principles regarding the uh, internal check system and these are also called the principle of internal check system actually this is the guidelines while establishing an internal check system the first one is that division of work here uh, what we are saying is that no one person must be allocated to perform a task from origin or end and uh, so here the activity or transaction is divided into so many uh, 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 so many subdivisions so the no one person uh, cannot perform a single task from the origin of end actually what happening here is that we are dividing the work in the proper and rational way among the staff and this division will helps in the specialization and also to attain the efficiency and the speed of work second one is that job rotation yeah as per this principle what we are doing is that no individual clerk should be allowed to occupy a particular area of operation for a long period uh, familiarity with a position offers a person greater flexibility to attain manipulation with the system so we are we will uh, rotate from one job to another job or we will change from one job to another job based on uh, based on the period or based on the experience etc actually if we <clears throat> if we allow a person to do a 
a particular job for a long period it will create a scene to attempt manipulation with the system okay and third one is authority level here uh, as per this principle or the authority level principles there must be a clear cut authority level for allowing transaction to various transactions okay uh, if the authority is specified if the authority and also the responsibilities are at the same time is uh, ensured and the existence of authority levels results in review of operation of the subordinates as per these principles every individual can know where whom to report or who will inspect the work of the subordinates and the fourth one is that the separation of custody and the recording that means the person handling the asset will not be allowed to maintain the records if we allow that person to maintain the uh, maintain the resources or maintain the asset and also to maintain the records it will create a chance for uh, making fraud or irregularities so the person handling an asset should not be allowed to maintain the record of the transactions and the fifth one is then accounting controls so here as per this principle the measures must be taken to ensure that accounting provides a valuable and reliable information regarding the accounts self balancing system and preparation of the reconciliation statement cash book etc so if we are not taking the accounting controls we cannot reliable or we cannot uh, ensure that in the final account is free from errors so the accounting controls must be strictly ensured while uh, we are while we are doing this internal check system or we are ensuring this internal check system and the next one is that well established policies and procedures so base uh, this principle we can read along with the accounting controls as per this principle the policies and procedures laid down by the uh, management uh, in a clear and uh, crystal manner or crystal clear manner because it will avoid the confusion in the flow of work and all policies in the uh, 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 that all policies that en uh, that enforced in the Uh, offices will be given to the manual of uh, will be in the office manual and should be given to all the employees and next one is the cross checking of the transaction there should be a proper system of cross checking in the internal check system because the cross checking is the main feature of internal check system if there is no cross checking there will be no internal checking so the entries made by the one employer is automatically checked or authorized by the work of another employee okay so cross checking of transaction is necessary and compliance with the statutes and this is a statutory requirement if the internal check system is a statutory requirements because it should be able to generate the accounting information and the reports to be submitted to the management and the external parties because the final account should be always or the accounting information should be always free from errors and it should be reliable because through this accounting information one man is evaluating the company so uh, the internal check system should comply with the statutory requirements next one the preparation of the financial statement Uh, here what we are saying that there should be a prompt recording of the transactions and the timely recording of the uh, financial uh, statements so if we if we record the transactions in a prompt manner then only we can uh, we can publish or we can prepare the financial statements in a time based manner next one is the safeguarding of asset uh, the internal check system ensure that the protection of assets from the fraud and misappropriations that's why we are ensuring this internal check system and uh, and for safeguarding the assets of the assets we are doing the periodical verification of the assets and the next one is the filing and the documentation here as per this the filing and documentation principle 
there should be an efficient filing and documentation system we are keeping separate files for the vouchers invoices cash memos letters correspondence receipts payment etc so the filing and documentation should be in a, a crystal clear manner because uh, this is the basic uh, step before the transactions or the transaction is based on this uh, documentation so it should be very important and next one is the use of labor saving or devices the organization should use the labor saving devices like computer time recording machines cash registers printers etc uh, why because it reduces the scope of manipulation and also ensures better efficiency in the office work if we employ the labor there will be a chance of errors but if we are employing the machines we can generate uh, reliable information clear information and also we can ensure the better efficiency in the office work so these are the these tall principles are the various principles of internal check and next we are going to the advantages what are the various advantages of internal check system the first advantage is that the distribution of work the work is distributed among the staff based on their qualifications okay so uh, <clears throat> there should be a proper division of responsibility of each member of the staff and it also ensures that the accountability is also entrusted and second point is that we can detect uh, the errors and frauds at the early stages because one uh, the, 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 the activity done by the one person is audited by the next person so here we can find the uh, errors and fraud at the earliest stage and next one efficiency of work as we already taught that due to the distribution of the work or due to the division of the work the clerk will attain the specialization in that work and it will increases the efficiency of the work and it will act as a moral check on employees okay this will exercise the moral check over the staff and uh, that's why we are telling that it is auditing by the staff itself okay internal check is an auditing by the staff itself next one we can fix the responsibility of the errors and fraud to a particular person due to this system that's we already explained and it will a great help to the auditor that is a very important because the internal check is always uh, is always a support to the auditor because if there is a uh, if there is a uh, efficient internal check system uh, either the mm, the audit it will be a great uh, help to the auditor because uh, if there is a good uh, in internal check system we can ensure that the, there will be less errors or fraud okay so it will reduce the workload of the auditor and next one we are going to the disadvantages what are the various disadvantages of the internal check system as we know that when we divide the work or when we divide a particular transactions among different persons it we want to employ more persons and it is more ex, uh, expensive and also the time consuming because in the government offices we can we can see that uh, to move the file from one table to another table it will may it, it takes more time like uh, like that here also we want to employ more persons and also it's a time consuming process and next one the quality is sacrificed for the promptness actually in the internal check system the <clears throat> the, the important factor is to reduce the uh, fraud so we are uh, or we are we are sacrificing the quality for the promptness and third third point is that the careless among the responsible and high efficient high officials increase because as per the internal check system the work done by one person will be audited by the next person so the person at the top or the person the the person the, the responsible person the actual responsible person or the high officials their careless will increase because they will always think that it is uh, or it, it, it is audited in the um, lower level so we don't we don't have much to 
uh, we don't have much to correct or we don't have much to do in this transaction okay and last one if it is organized properly it, it will result in chaos and disorders because uh, if we are in enforcing an internal check in a system proper guidelines should be issued to the employees otherwise uh, the employees will not know whom to report or who will do the first one who will do the second activity who will do the third activity so if we are imposing this internal check or if we are <clears throat> ensuring in, or if we are do if we are uh, arranging the work in the internal check system it should be crystal clear and it should be communicated to the and the uh, employees itself so these are the disadvantages and last um, point that is what is the duties of an auditor with regard to the internal system okay the first one is that the internal <coughs> tech system reduces to a great extent the work of an auditor but it does not it does not relieve or reduce his liability okay the internal check is a greater help to the auditor but if the auditor cannot escape from the liabilities and responsibilities okay so the auditor should examine the system of internal check keeping in view of these points the first point is that brief statement from the client regarding the internal check the auditor should call for a brief statement from the client regarding the internal check system that <clears throat> that is in the operation okay so uh, what are the how the activities is divided among the staff who is uh, auditing then uh, who is the auditing the first step who is auditing the second step so that should be ensured and the second point is that the auditor want to examine the system in the light and size and nature of the business so based on his examination uh, he should see how far the system has the possibilities of errors and fraud or the auditor want to ensure that this system is foolproof if it is not foolproof he should identify where is the problem okay and next one is that he should examine the system carefully with the <coughs> prudence and caution and uh, ensure that it should not it, sh it is free from defective and if it is defect if it is not defective he can avoid or auditor may can conveniently avoid the in depth checking of all transaction that means if it is if there is a good system of internal check he can avoid or he can uh, his workload will be reduced because he doesn't want to uh, check all the transactions thoroughly okay and uh, this is a sample system if it is a not defective we uh, he can adopt the sample system that means he can take he can audit uh, or audit the books in a random manner or he can select some representative transactions or a particular books of account for the detailed checking then but if the internal checks system is will if defective detailed checking is uh, necessary for ensuring the responsibility of the errors okay <coughs> so he should not be presumed that everything is all right if the system is defective so he should carry on a detailed checking of the books of account if he fails to detect an irregularity he may help for the response he will be held responsible so in short we can say that the good and efficient system of internal check is now be devised to relieve him the responsibilities and liabilities of an auditor okay he can rely on the system will depend upon the circumstances of each particular case and his own skill experience and training okay thank you